Uh, my name is Zachary Kroger. I'm from Central Washington. That's Washington State, not Washington, D.C. Uh, my interests are psychology and a lot of why people believe weird things. Um, why do people believe in alien abductions and ghosts and Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, astrology, homeopathic medicine, creationism, all sorts of stuff that just flies in the direct face of science, basically. And I'm interested, not, I know why they're wrong, but I'm kind of interested, why do people hang on to these ideas so strongly when it's so easy to show that it's absolutely false? Airborne, it's created by a second grade teacher. Oh, so it must work, right? Because teachers know how to make medicine. Anyway, um, basically what these things are, they're not bad for you by any means, but it just takes in what they call natural herbs and stuff, and great, okay, it's natural, just because it's natural, doesn't mean it's bad for you. And sometimes, I mean, fire, that's natural, but that is bad for you. But you gotta be careful with this type of stuff. Um, things for, to heal the common cold, aches and pains, nausea, that type of stuff, it's pretty easy to fix. Your body is pretty good at responding and fixing itself. However, if you take something and then you get healed, you're gonna attribute that, oh, well, that must have healed me. So if you know, I have a ham sandwich in the morning and then I feel better in the afternoon, oh, well, the ham sandwich must have done it. But no, it might have just been your body's natural response. With things like echinacea and other uh, homeopathic things, um, what it happens is what's called the placebo effect. It's just the belief that it's gonna work. And that is like a very, very strong, very powerful belief that if something's gonna work, it will work. I used to fool myself all the time with orange juice. I thought orange juice cured everything. and I felt a little bad. Orange juice felt better. And then, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, I'm sure it's orange juice is good for you, but it's not gonna get rid of strep throat and stuff like that. So, one, but once you start to get into this placebo thing, You'll, you'll, if you don't realize it's a placebo, you really believe it does work. And in some context, I guess it does work, but it's the belief that it's working, not the actual medicine. Now, how do we know it doesn't work? Well, that's what you do is called a double-blind study. What you do is you have a patient and the experimenter, and we give the patient a, a placebo pill, basically a placebo, just a, a sugar pill. And then we give somebody else with the same uh, disease or whatever actual medicine. And we'd see, or, or the supposed medicine that we're testing, and we'd see if there's any differentiation between their, the rates that they get better. And if the person doesn't get any better than the person with the placebo pill, then we know, well, the medicine doesn't really work. And this happens all the time with homeopathic medicines. Every single study that's ever been done has never had any st statistical significance. That is, that the placebo did just as good as the homeopathic medicine. Now, if you compare the homeopathic medicine to the other stuff, well, the regular medicine that we, you know, the, the medical community uses works much better, as we would expect. That's why we use it. If homeopathic medicine did work, then they'd sell it and whatnot. Then you get into the big conspiracy theory as well. It's a conspiracy this, conspiracy that. And you'll hear this through every pseudoscience you go into. Creationists, oh, you know, science, the atheist scientists and evolutionists, conspiracy. Astrology, people, oh, the, you know, the devil or the, the evil, um, unhappy astronomers. They don't want people to know about astrology. Basically everywhere you go, the Einstein deniers, or the relativity deniers I should say, oh Einstein's wrong, everybody's just a bit too big secret, it's embarrassing to the physicists. Same with homeopathic medicine, it's this big government conspiracy and the doctors, every single doctor is being paid by the government. Okay, well that's just saying there's no, because there's no evidence for it, then they assume, oh that proves that we're right. So likewise I could say, well I have this theory that um, magic mean jars of peanut butter are taking over the world, but the government's hiding it. And that's why if you, you know, search the net and search all the news sources and libraries, you're not going to find any information on it because the government's banning all that information. And so that's how conspiracy theories work, and that's basically what the homeopathic people have to really hold on to, is that conspiracy this, conspiracy that. Another big thing that really continues the belief that homeopathic medicine works is what's called anecdotal evidence. It's kind of a bad name. Anecdotal evidence is not evidence at all. What an anecdote is, is just kind of a personal story or a story you heard from someone else. So you'll hear this all the time with, an, with any sort of uh, weird, you know, prayer healing, faith healers, homeopathic medicines, all these kind of fringe medical people. Um, they'll, you know, someone will say, oh, my brother had cancer and then he was cured, or my so-and-so had ADHD and something. They like to go for really extreme things. You'll hear a lot, oh, my, my, a cousin's best friend, he had cancer and you know heart disease and liver problems and SARS, all sorts of stuff. And oh, homeopathic medicine, yay, it worked. Well, you know, where is your cousin? Let's put him under some tests. Did we have documentation before? And did we have documentation after? Was it, you know, did we really look? How do we know? Well, we can never figure this stuff out. So, 
anecdotal evidence doesn't work. And if we're going to accept that, those type of stories, which they might be true, they might, but if we're going to accept those stories, we have to use the same rules everywhere. So then we start to have to believe people that say, well, you know, Elvis, I saw Elvis, he was back to life and he cured me of, you know, whatever. So then we have to start to believe those things. And we can't, we just need, the only way we can figure out if something really does work is to do an experiment in a con controlled condition, like I said earlier, with against a placebo pill. And so far, homeopathic medicine has never worked. Another big thing that really is like, oh, come on, people, is uh, there's a guy named James Randi. He lives in Florida. He's a, he used to be a magician. Now he works basically for the, he's kind of a public spokesperson on pseudoscience, um, just beliefs gone wrong, basically. And he challenges people that take advantage of other people in the sense of uh, astrology, psychics, any sort of magical, mystical sort of thing. And he has a challenge, $1 million, if anybody can do anything supernatural under a controlled setting that is you know read somebody's mind palm reading ouija boards talk to the dead anything bend a spoon with your your mind power uh homeopathic medicine anything of that sort if you can do it in a controlled condition and it works you get a million dollars and there's been over 600 applicants in all all fields of things and nobody's even got close and so to me that kind of seals it right there the homeopathic thing is based on the theory that like cures like. Now, they, all the homeopathic medicine people, they throw out the whole uh, germ theory of disease. Uh, apparently it's a conspiracy or something, I'm not sure what. But they assume that if you take something that could make you sick while you're sick, it will cure, your, cure you. So for instance, say you have a rash. Now to heal that, what you need to do is put on something that would cause a rash originally, like poison ivy. So you're not gonna put poison ivy leaves on your arm. What you have to do is you have to dilute it. Dilution is the solution as it, as it goes. So what they'll do is they'll take one part, poison ivy, 10 parts water, and they'll mix it up. And then they'll take one part of that and 10 parts water and mix it up. One part of that, 10 parts water, mix that up. And you can see on the homeopathic medicine bottles, there's usually 30X or 30C, and that's the amount of times that they've diluted it. So after you do it 30 times, you have one part per one followed by 30 zeros. <laughs> that's not very many parts of the actual medicine. Now, in order to even get one of those parts, you'd have to drink over 7,000 gallons to get even one molecule of the original medicine. So all you're drinking is basically water. Every, sometimes it's salt water, sometimes it's sugar water, but you're, all you're doing is drinking water. Now, the reason that they thought originally this worked back in the 1800s is because one of the big medical things they would do was bloodletting. Now, bloodletting is not good for you, but soon as they started having this homeopathic idea of you know, what is just water, well, water's gonna, you know, water's good for you. So drinking water is going to do a little bit better than letting your blood out. So it, you know, it did better in that sense. But as for, um, you know, curing anything, it's never ever been shown to, you know, maybe someday somebody will figure something out and it will work. But they've done so many tests, so many tests, and they have, you know, newsletters on homeopathic medicine that come out all the time. And every other month, it's like, oh, homeopathic medicine failed the test again. And it's like, how many times are they gonna test this stuff? We know it doesn't work. And if it did work, we'd use it.